Were you always planning to use a Gato engine? If you want to do a AAA by, you, by yourself, it's not gonna happen. What advice do you have to someone who is ready to take the plunge and make a game? Sure, if you don't need to sell it, just just get lost if you want, it's, it's fine. I'm happy to be talking with uh, Aurelion and Adrian of Frog Collective about their game Cold Ridge. I'm really excited, one, to hear about their use of uh, the Gato engine. I'll give it to you guys, and so you can introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about Cold Ridge. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Adrien. Uh, I've started to work in the video game industry like 12, 12 years ago now. At the beginning, I didn't uh, expect it to, to be able to do that uh, as a professional uh, and started to work in the, uh, at Amplitude Studio uh, as my first job uh, in uh, 2011. And from that point, uh, I, I did a lot of stuff. So I worked on the gameplay side of things, coding the, the game mechanics, stuff like that. Uh, on the audio side, uh, integrating some sound effects, uh, music. Then I worked on uh, intelligence artificial. Uh, artificial intelligence um, for some years uh, on some big strategy games. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to give yeah. you the wrong background here, but uh, are both of you are from Amplitude Studios, is that right? Well, I started 12 years ago, something like this. Completely different uh, background, though. I'm more on the creative side. Uh, I draw a lot. Since I was a kid, I was drawing all the time. Didn't envision video games at first, because uh, at that time it wasn't a safe career path. So I started as a, an illustrator. I did a lot of illustration for various projects uh, and some video games projects. So that's how I uh, got my foot in the in the door, I guess. So for, for Cold Ridge, who does, does what? for the game uh it's it's we, we have our own specialties like i'm more on the visual side you know all the graphical assets and everything and he's more on the technical side but there is a lot of things that fall in the middle when when we don't know exactly how to do how to do things so um it's more something where we each have some ideas and then we collide things to to try to find the the well, what we want to do uh, uh, for example, on the game design side, uh, it's not one of our specialties. Uh, of, uh, so uh, we tend to um, to work together on that uh, on that topic. You know, who who does sort of the primary coding, for example? Or do you, are you both doing the coding? I'm, I'm, main, I'm mainly doing the code here. Yeah. Uh, Aurélien is doing the the shader part, some stuff when <laughs> when uh, it's possible. But uh, mainly uh, the code uh, is uh, on my. Uh, I, I'm mainly uh, doing the code and the audio part of the game. Then we got some help uh, from friends uh, for the audio assets and uh, for for the music. The thing that jumped out to me was the, the the artwork is very distinct. When I when I showcase it on the weekly video that I do on the channel, I, I think people are just fell in love with the visuals. So who's, are you both kind of working on the art as well? Or is that one more than the other? That's mainly me. Um, but, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult to do all the things by yourself. Uh, I'm, I think I always mean, to, I always need to ask for opinions. So it's quite important to have someone else, you know, to talk to. A great tool to have to, to be able to speak to someone about what you are doing. It's way more pleasing uh, that way, you know, because yeah. walking alone is quite difficult. Um, really and, difficult, yeah. you know, to, to have someone to talk to sometimes is just very, very helpful and necessary. You from a lot of time uh, thinking alone and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you get crazy. On that side, we also uh, have uh, some friends that are following the project and we send them some build uh, from time to time so uh, we can have some tests and feedback on the mechanics and the visual and the everything. So it helps a lot um, uh, having a touch with the, the real world from people that don't know a lot the project and see what's uh, because when you work a lot on a project like that you you just lose sight of uh, of uh, what discovering the project is yeah i i think a lot of um the viewers that are maybe working on uh, you know their first game or a prototype or a demo or something that's very early stage they forget about the fact that other people are going to play it <laughs> or look at it 
Um, so yeah, I think, is there any advice into getting, um, you know, having people test and, and play and, and bounce ideas off of? As the advice is to, to make the maximum people outside of uh, your team uh, test the game. Uh, new people that are in the test uh, at different points of the production, you, you have this first sight of the game uh, uh, multiple times in your development. And you can see if things are getting better or not on specific uh, topics. So you need to, to analyze a lot uh, what people are saying, you know, because um, sometimes people, people are um, are going to try to find solutions for you and it's it's natural it's a natural thing uh, we all do that but um as a game developer you need to try to understand why uh, the person is you know at, uh, telling this or that and try not to you know always apply exactly the feedback they give you you can get lost if you listen to everybody all the time uh you know you get you're gonna get pulled out in every direction uh you have to know what what your game is uh the core value of your games it's very important, otherwise, whether you have feedback or not, uh, if you don't know that, you never release anything, I think. Uh, don't be afraid, I think, to not apply some feedbacks, because, yeah. uh, or apply it in a very different way that they are uh, expressed. If you, if you know what your game is and what you, where you want to go, you have to stick with that. I'd, I'd love to hear about what, what is Coleridge? What is the, uh, the, the point of the game? What's the background of the game? Maybe inspirations of it? Cold Ridge is um, a turn-based exploration game. The, the, the main, uh, the main uh, loop of the game is about, um, uh, about exploration uh, of a world, an, an unknown world, and about planification of movement. You, uh, you have some objective and uh, you, uh, you try to fit them uh, during your play. You fix your own objectives. So, uh, you you need uh, to plan for your movement and also to plan for what you need to do in the game. Where did the uh, the sort of cowboy western theme come from? Good question. Uh, it wasn't there at the beginning. Um, actually, we we were focusing on game mechanics at first. Uh, we did prototypes and you know uh, a lot of um, as Adrian said, uh, prototypes based on um, tabletop games. So we, we built that first, and when we had that and we were satisfied with that, uh, we decided on a theme. We talked about, you know, exploration, resources, uh, wide uh, landscapes, uh, contracts. So it, it, felt, it felt right. Uh, just, it just felt right, you know, to, to have this setting. Were you always planning to use um, the Gato engine, or at what point was that sort of decided? Uh, yes, we, we, we worked um, uh, with Unity for 12 years uh, at Amplitude Studio, so we, we, we know uh, Unity a lot. From, from years to years, we, we saw uh, Unity changing, uh, and personally, I didn't like the direction that it took, so I wanted to, to try uh, other, another technology. So. When we started to, uh, to, to, to think about this project with Aurelien, uh, like one year ago, uh, approximately, uh, we started to see uh, what, uh, what, what engine exists. I, I tested Godot like four years ago, something like that, and it, it was uh, already uh, quite nice to use, but some stuff was uh, quite clunky for a professional project. So I tested Godot 4 that was just out uh, at this moment last year and it was quite nice uh, everything was uh, quite uh, in place and working very well when uh, when unity uh, announced uh, its uh, change of pricing it's just uh, ensured our decisions okay we we <laughs> we, we, yeah. we will continue to use godot and and we are uh, today we are very happy uh, about this choice uh, we don't have a lot of issues with uh, with godot uh, until now part of this was I, i'd love to show a little bit because i don't think people get a lot of uh, sort of an inside look. I think it would be really interesting for people to see what that looks like, uh, sort of in engine. The, the entry point of the of the game is uh, the this scene application. So this this scene is about how do we launch the game and uh, and and what will be executed uh, and in what order. So it, it allows us to to control that that uh, that flow. We use scene. Uh, to build our menu. So for example, here's the main menu uh, screen. 
but we also use scenes to um, preload things. We, we just register a bunch of scenes in a, in, in a mega scene that allow us to load everything during a loading screen. So here it's all the stuff that need to be loaded um, outside of a game. So we have the, the main menu, the option, and, uh, and the, the credit screen. Uh, and then when we start, there is the same architecture, but for a game. Um, and we have the same scene uh, that, uh, that, uh, that is loading uh, an instance of, of the game. So uh, we have the view, the 3D, the 3D view of the game. So you can see the, the mountain of coverage here. Uh, and the, all the place here in the middle will be procedurally generated during the loading of the game. And we have the UI. The same stuff, uh, we have a lot uh, of, uh, this is a loading, uh, a loading thing for us. And then we have each panel that are split in, uh, in, uh, in, in a specific scene. So we can see, for example, this, uh, this screen. There's, there's a lot of UI elements um, to this game, clearly. How did you find the UI system and, and do you have any tips? Uh, well... It was a struggle for us at first, for sure. Uh, as you said, we, there is not a lot of resources. First, it's, it's very daunting. It's very, yeah, it's very difficult to 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 approach because you have the the anchor post system, which is a bit uh, you know tricky to understand. Uh, the theme, it, it's also the theme system is very good, but it's very you know uh, a bit clunky uh, at first glance because you don't know really. You know how how it's applied to things. Once you understand all those things, uh, it's a very po powerful tool. It works well, and um, co combined with the system of uh, UI scaling in Godot, uh, it's quite powerful. Uh, you 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 can resize the UI, and it all it almost works. Uh, if you did things well with anchors, uh, it works quite well. Uh, you need to go with the flow. Because if you try to uh, go uh, against the system, you 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 will have some issues. You'll lose. <laughs> You're gonna lose. I think uh, another aspect of the the game that really is the the sort of eye catching. Obviously, the art is is very excellent, uh, but is the the three D environment that you you guys have set up. Is there uh, an example of that that you can show? So uh, in the editor, we have that. So we have the camera that is here and that mm -hmm. is looking at the at the scene. We have a, a big mesh that is the, the non-interactable uh, 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 world. And then here we are just feeling some uh, procedural generation. So this is the desert. We have the grassland and the mud. And we are starting by spawning this, um, creating the, the uh, spawning this uh, scene. And then if there is a resource, we just add the corresponding uh, the corresponding uh, resource on the top, extra, extra. And we have all, the, all this stuff. We can, uh, when you, you use a portal in the game, you can, uh, we, we add this scene, extra. extra. And, and we have some yeah. test scene here oh, to, yeah. to, 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 yeah. to, to test uh, what, uh, what, yeah, can, see, that's, what, that's, what is I mean, the that result looks gorgeous. Without, that looks using, really good. without using the procedural generation. Yeah, to, to, to really set the colors right, you know, it's, it's, it's quite mandatory. I think when you, you have, you know, uh, an engine that is uh, uh, assembling all those pieces, as an artist, it's tough to, to you know, uh, set up all the colors separately. Uh, you need to, to, to work in a big scene with all your elements, otherwise it's, it's too, too tough to balance everything out. I think an, another node that kind of freaks people out is the, uh, the world environment node. Because there's mm. there's a lot of stuff in there, and mm. you can you can make a small change and make something look really really ugly really quick. Uh, so yeah. I'd be curious to to see what you guys have set up for that. Uh, actually, uh, I started by removing all <laughs> unnecessary things. Yes, yeah, those are very important feature for your rendering for sure. And it's uh, if you don't have the vocabulary uh, of mm. this, it's tough to understand. Like SSAO, what is SSAO? If you don't know the acronym. You're screwed, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, SSO, it's, it's on some I mean, games, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of things enabled. So you guys yeah. are making this yeah. look this good without all the, all, the, all the S settings that people see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, I mean, you yeah. do have color correction. I think people forget about that. 
to do yeah. a, a color correction. It's because of our uh, RD action. Uh, we don't rely too much on heavy rendering features. It's more, mm. you know, a, a color and shape. Uh, the lighting is very simple. Uh, you see it's almost flat when you look at the map from up top. It's almost is it just the, the, the directional light? Is that the, yeah, the only light or do you have some? Yeah. It's the only light. You have just the direction light that casts shadows and stuff. And you have your, the environment color you see here, the blue uh, blue thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. Um, even the fog is uh, fake. It's a 2D fog that it's implemented in the UI. It's just a texture. Uh, it's just a texture. That that yeah. it's, it's in UI. Where is it? Uh, I don't see it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually not in the 3D scene because it's a 2D thing. It's, it's, new, yeah, it's, it's really in the yeah. UI. Yeah, here yeah. and so yeah, you see the yeah. blue thing. This is the fog. The camera angle is fixed. You know, we don't rotate camera. Yeah. We don't zoom in and out. So we can do that. Just you know, having the the fog in two D. Uh, but that's well, I imagine it's cheaper than doing a bunch of you know it's volumetric. It's cheapest <laughs> fog you ever. Just the plane. Have. <laughs> if if it looks good, that's the main yeah. thing, right? Because no one playing the yeah. game is going to be like, oh, I wonder how they mm -hmm. did this fog. They yeah. don't care. Because, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and it was tricky to use the, the standard fog for us because, you know, the camera is uh, quite vertical, so you don't have depth. Uh, and if you activate fog, like the whole thing is foggy and hazy, so you don't see anything, even the things that are closer. Uh, so that's why we, we, we fake it like that. But I think sometimes people get lost in the technical, you know, technical uh, things of rendering because uh, there is a lot of things to to yeah as you see the panel is huge you have mm -hmm. a lot of complex uh, system in there and it's quite easy to get lost in that um and when uh, as you say when people want uh, to make the game looks good uh they focus on technical things uh and if you i think if you do that uh, you're going to end up having a very um heavy game like a, a very uh, the, the game is going to be hard to to run um, what advice, just sort of like quick advice would you have to someone who is really, really like they're ready to, to make the, the jump, take the plunge and make a game. What would be the first thing you would do? It's important to wait for the right time to do it for you because, um, we can't, we can say that we are, we, we, we've, we've done Coleridge in the, the demo of Coleridge in four months, but it will be, uh, a bit uh, a lie because we 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 trained to 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 do this um, this um, uh, specialties of making games for like ten years before. So we learned a lot of stuff. The the main um, stuff for me uh, that is important uh, on the 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 project we are doing now is. Uh, uh, what you what you know and uh, also uh, the um, the the people that you are around you that can uh, that can help you at, at some point. It's a tough question because there is so much things that are difficult. There's so much to do. Uh, so much to do. Very different specialties and and jobs. It's 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 quite tough. As Adrian said, it's very important to have people around you. You know that can help you. I think. Uh, even, even, you know, with a, a small discussion or, or something like that, having a coffee with someone and talking about your games, it's very helpful sometimes. So definitely don't go alone, I think. And also, like I said before, uh, know what you want to do. Uh, it's easy to get lost. There is so much things. If you want to do a triple A by, you, by yourself, it's not going to happen. Uh, so be realistic on your choices. Uh, and it's okay to, 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 to not please anyone, to not please everyone. I think not please anyone is, is bad, but anyone is that's okay too. <laughs> if, if you don't need to sell it, you're okay then. Yeah. If you don't need to sell it, just have fun, you know, don't, don't, you know, yeah, for sure. If you don't need to sell it, just, just get lost if you want. It's, it's fine. The demo is out, right? Yeah. The demo is out, uh, since last week. So, uh, you can test it on Steam, uh, and, um, and the game will be out on the last quarter of this year. Thanks for uh, sitting down Thank and you. chatting. It just, I used to play Civ as a kid, and that's like I grew up with that game back when it was squares and not hex, a hex grid. <laughs> and uh, I love strategy games, but this, the, the art style and the, uh, the uniqueness of having a cowboy go through a portal is, uh, it was really endearing. I, I, I liked it quite a, quite a lot. So 
um yeah all the best to you guys and thanks for for chat thank you thanks for inviting us